Hello students, this is Dr. Jackman here and this is the second video in our online video series for Psych 1002, the Psych of Human Development. This second video is on language development or linguistic development and language acquisition. As you can see from the first slide in this series, you have a number of individuals there or kind of cartoon-like looking individuals speaking different languages and a young man saying hello in a number of different languages that is that are written on the board so today we'll be looking at the development of language in us human beings how language is developed we will be speaking about our innate ability to develop language the value of language as a communication tool and as you can see from the two pics that are on the screen the first one is a young teacher sitting with a group of young children say eight or nine and she's having a conversation with them she's conversating with them she's dialoguing with them and they were through and there is body language messages being communicated a warm smile etc and the second picture is that of possibly a father with his two children one boy one girl and he's reading to them or illustrating something to them or discussing with them so in that process language is being developed language is being modeled language is being exchanged and so therefore the whole idea of language development we would look at the different theories that exist in how language is acquired and how language is developed so let's move on okay there are four basic theories of language acquisition or four basic ways in which the theorists identify that we acquire language as a nativist view the behaviorist view the short social cognitive view and the sociocultural view so we look at each of these different perspectives on language acquisition one at a time the first one we want to look at is the nativist view and this is is simply saying that we are genetically pre-wired for language and that pre-wiring mean that we come with certain structures in our brain that are responsible for understanding the rules of grammar and others that govern speech and so that we are more or less born with the ability to understand language understand the complex rules of grammar and syntax and semantics and as we develop this ability is enhanced by our interactions and so on but basically the native is saying that we are by nature we are oriented to developing language and if you look at the the diagram that is on the screen you would see that certain areas of the brain are now highlighted for example you have the in terms of the numbers look let's take them one at a time you have the visual cortex that receives written words and are responsible for visual stimulation receives written words and as and determines the helps one to understand visual stimulation then there is the angular gyrus and that area of the brain transforms visual representations into an auditory code so what you see you can articulate and you can represent it with with words and on or produce it with words and then there is the motor cortex that is responsible for the way words are pronounced and so that motor cortex motor meaning movement controls the different areas in the mouth the tongue the soft and hard palate the lips so that we can form and shape our words and of course from last semester you would remember Broca's area and Wernicke's area Broca's area is responsible for the production of speech and Broca's area of course is connected to the motor cortex and so when we want to produce words Broca's area um, stimulates the, the, mo the motor cortex so that we shape the words that we want to, to say and the words that we want to produce and Wernicke's area interprets the auditory code the things that we hear are interpreted through Wernicke's area so we can understand speech and language we could understand intonation how someone raises their voice how their voice um, what they mean by the, the, the sound of their voice in terms of the pitch 
and so on. So this little diagram there best represents this idea of the brain structures that we are born with that develop as we grow that become more myelinated um, in our speech development. Further, in terms of our language development, you know these two areas are the Broca and Wernicke's area areas are located on the left side of the brain and so they control our speech development. Uh, the motor areas or the motor cortex, as we said before, controls the tongue, the lips, etc., etc. And so on this little diagram here, you, the, the question is asked, where does language live? And so we want to identify this area of the brain as the areas responsible for our language development. Okay, next, we have a breakdown of the, the areas and their further functions. So besides simply producing speech, Broca's area is also believed to be responsible for our ability to, to process the lexicon and the phonologies, all the phonemes, the units, sounds, and so on, unit of sounds that we encounter. So when we hear words pronounced, or when children hear words pronounced from a very early age, they begin to pick up these basic understandings of lexicon and the phonology and the sound of words. Um, Vernicki's area is the area that we're responsible for comprehension and for processing speech songs so that we, we do not hear when someone speaks we do not hear each letter being articulated one at a time but we hear it in a flow so we hear entire words and then we link words together as phrases and they become sentences and so a whole understanding of comprehension and meaning that is associated with speech is, proce is processed by Wernicke's area and of course we know individuals who are in have an injury to that part of the brain experience what is called Wernicke's aphasia and so they have problems interpreting what is being said and individuals who have problems with Broca's area would have difficulty understanding what understanding producing language producing words and the motor cortex is that vocalization area that's control um, all the different parts of the the speaking apparatus the mouth area the auditory co cortex receives signals from the auditory nerves in the inner ear so what you hear you are able to understand and process so the broker's area and Wernicke's area are closely related to the auditory as well as the motor cortex cortexes in the brain how do we learn language? So again, as we're emphasizing the first um, area in terms of the first concept in terms of language development is that of the nativist view that language is innate and so language is quote unquote biological by nature. And the main theorist that brought this um, concept to the fore is Noam Chomsky, who said that we are born with a language acquisition device device simply meaning that we are born to learn language and therefore um, once we expose our language from an early age we have what is called the infinite use of finite means so that we can we can produce a wide once we stay within that language we can produce a wide range of expressions and verbalizations uh, and so much so that it can be considered to be infinite generativity in the what we can produce once we learn the basics of a language, vocabulary, syntax, grammar, etc., etc. Um, however, we, although we accept that we are biologically pre-wired or language is, is innate, there is also an environmental factor. So much so that if we never hear language, then we would not be able to produce language. And there are a number of situations and circumstances where that has actually occurred. The wild boy of Aveyron is one case in point. Um, the environmental nature of language was further enhanced or further developed by Skinner who argued that environment or nurture is more powerful in development of language acquisition. So much so that those who are deprived, from, deprived of language are not able to learn to speak 
because as was said as is believed that we are born blank slate or tabla rasa and that is a concept that comes from the philosopher G, um, John Locke British philosopher John Locke so through biology and the environment if you combine those two you would have those factors um, that help humans to develop or to learn the language of their um, nativity additionally and this is more data that shows the impact of language being innate a study was done by Johnson and Newport that identified um, language learners or immigrants who came to the United States and English was not their first language and they found that those who came to the United States between the age of three and seven were able to score the highest as you can see from the from the graph 98% on a comprehension uh, English grammar comprehension test uh, whereas those who came between 8 and 10 93% those who came between 11 and 15 in their pre and early teens scored just about 85 percent and those who came much older like at the end of adolescence and older was only able to score 75 76 percent therefore it can be easily concluded that the earlier you are immersed in a foreign language the earlier you are immersed in a language that is not your native language especially english is the first you are able to acquire the grammatical rules and the understanding of that language and this is what that so that the, the the brain as it will has a critical period for language acquisition so this is what it shows so the earlier you are exposed the faster the, the language is learned and so those of you who are doing ECC as well as primary you recognize that lang that Spanish is being introduced earlier and earlier in the school system and that is very very um, that is quite valuable because children need to be exposed to language within that critical period of their language development okay so we would look at two other theories and this one is dealing with the behaviorist as well as the social cognitive so i pause for you to um, internalize what we have covered so far